Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing work on our low poly stylized cottage, this time working on different parts of the environment. Do check out the other playlist on my channel. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. Okay so here's where we got to last time and I want to put the last modeling details in. Firstly I'm going to create the floor and I'll do it the nice easy way, so Shift A to add, Mesh, UV Sphere. I'll press 1 to go to front view, scale it up, G to grab, so it's roughly in the middle for now, and go across to wireframe mode. Let's go to edit mode and select half the sphere and delete those faces. Back to object mode and let's move it into position. Now you can have it nice and round like that, but it's obviously going to cut into the side of your house a fair bit. So I'll go to side view and I'm going to scale it in the Z a fair bit like this and then G to grab, move it into position. Let's just scale it so it's nice and big. So possibly somewhere around there. Let's just have a quick look at front view as well and then back into solid mode and see how we're looking. I quite like that style, I think that works. Let's just make sure it's lined up in the middle and that's all good. Now if I right click and shade smooth, I think that looks all right like that personally, but you might want to make it a bit smoother. So control one is a quick way of adding a subsurface modifier. Make sure you're in object mode when you're doing that, but if it doesn't work, then just go to add modifier, subdivision surface modifier, and just make sure the viewport is set to one and the render is set to one as well. That way the render won't be too long. I'm just gonna push it up just a touch so it intersects these. Okay, next I created some plants out the front. Very straightforward again, so I'll shift right click just here, shift A to add, mesh, and then plane. I'll rotate that in the X 90 degrees so it's standing upright, and I'll scale it right down and scale in the Z. Now I'll go into edit mode, I'll zoom in a bit, control R and create two loop cuts and then scale the top one down but I'm going to do this in proportional edit. So S to scale and scale it down and use the wheel so you get a sort of curve going towards the top and the bottom one, I'll turn proportional edit off for this and just scale that in. So we've got a nice big leaf. Now with proportional edit back on, I'll select that top one and R to rotate and G to grab and just sort of move it and rotate it so it's a bit like a leaf. Okay, so that's fine and that's nice and simple. If you want it a bit smoother then do add another loop cut in the middle and G to grab and just smooth it out a bit and it's up to you and the look you're going for as to what you want. So somewhere around there looks absolutely fine. Now we need the 3D cursor to be in the middle here so I'm going to select that edge just there and press Shift S to move my cursor to the selected, which is this line here. Then into object mode, I can right click and set the origin point to the 3D cursor. So now the origin is right in the middle there. So I can easily shift D to duplicate R, Z, and I can move it around and it's much easier to create my plant. Now usually at this point, I decide I need to edit the shape of the leaf. So I'll go into edit mode and just adjust that slightly, probably into vertex mode this time with proportional edit on still and just edit these slightly. Now select both those two leaves, Shift D to duplicate by the Z, and then R, Z, and move those into position, and adapt the shape of them as you see fit. So they should all be emerging from a similar point and spreading outwards. Remember to scale some down as well. And there we go, a nice simple low poly plant. And just scatter these around it's probably easiest to join them together, so Control J will join them together. If for any reason that doesn't work, it may be because you haven't got an active object, so just check that one of them is yellow and then Control J. Also, you might want to make sure the pivot point is right in the center there. The 3D cursor is in the right position, so I'm going to press right click, set origin to 3D cursor, and it's nicely in the bottom there. It's easy to move around then, so if I press G to grab and rotate, I can easily move it around the bottom there. Now I think it's a good idea to press Alt D rather than Shift D. So Alt D and then move it across and rotate it around the Z slightly. Just move it into position. I press Alt D because then it's an instance of the first one. That means any changes I make to the first one will update with this one. You can rotate, scale and grab independently though. You can use snapping for this but I find it just as easy to just move them around. Remember to keep rotating so they look slightly random. Do remember to change the scale as well. And I like to keep it around the house, especially 
breaking up the points where two objects meet, so the house meeting the ground. Now these are kind of big and round, so you might want some slight grass type materials. I don't like to populate the whole thing with grass, I think that feels a bit less stylized. But you could use a particle system and use grass if you wanted to. I'm just going to adapt one of these, so Shift D this time, and I'll come into this and start adapting it so it's a bit more like grass. I'll deselect all, I press L to select one of these objects, so L for select linked, and I'll just delete those faces and those faces and just adapt these. So I'm pressing scale XX so that it scales them in the local X axis and then just moving them into position. That looks fine. Let's select all now and shift D to duplicate R and then Z just to create some more strands like this. That looks fine. Let's just adapt them slightly. In fact, they're looking a little bit similar to these ones, so I'll just have them going a bit more straight up in the air. That's great. So G to grab and move them into position. Alt D to duplicate and R to rotate. Give them some randomness, scale them as you see fit. And there we go, so some foliage. Now let's do the path at the front. For that, I'll use one of these bricks. Go to top view, shift D to duplicate, move it down. Side view, we can rotate it 90 degrees and let's scale it up a bit. Zoom in on that with full stop on my numpad. Now I've still got the bevel modifier so I can just adapt the shape and maybe go into edit mode and do a few loop cuts and just pull it around slightly so it's an unusual, so it's got some character. Once you've finished that, into front view, G to grab and intersect the ground and then just line it up. So go to side view and line it up so it's just sticking out of the ground slightly and then we can duplicate that and then start modifying the shape. I'll go into wireframe mode for this so I guess so I select the back faces as well and I'll rotate this one back to solid mode and place it into the ground. To top view now and I'll duplicate this again but I'll rotate it in the Z 180. Scale it down a bit, move it up and rotate it into position. Let's just see how that's looking and that's not too bad. Lastly we just need some clouds of smoke coming out of the chimney so that's fairly simple. Shift right click, shift A to add and just some icospheres. Start off nice and small, shift D to duplicate and just scale it up and you gradually scale up and distance them further apart as they go higher. And that gives the illusion that the clouds are sort of dissipating and drifting off into the distance. Okay, so that's the next modeling stage complete. Next time we'll be texturing. Again, do comment on how you're getting along and share your work on the Discord server. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.